Hi, my name's Caroline, also known as Car Knight. In this video, I'll show you how to use one of the best features of Daz Studio, Deformers. With Deformers, you can create mountains, fix poke through, animate clothing, and sculpt your own characters. The best way to learn Deformers is to actually use them. If you spend half an hour experimenting, it'll change the way you use Daz Studio. First of all, I'll show you what Deformers can do. With just a few deformers I've created a couple of simple morphs. This is one deformer that changes the shape of her nose. And here I use two deformers to change the shape of the cheeks. Another example. Using deformers on the hair I was able to fit the hair inside the hat. So you can fix any kind of poke through with deformers. So I'll show you first of all how to create and manipulate deformers and then I'll show you how to make these hills behind Toadstool Cottage. Create a primitive plane about 20 meters with 100 divisions. You'll see in a moment what divisions are and why it's important to have enough of them. Change the view to be wire shaded. You can see that this primitive plane is made up of squares or polygons. Where each line meets is called a point or a vertex. Deformers work by pulling these points or vertices around. Select the plane in the scene tab and press Ctrl F to frame it. This icon here will frame it too. Click Create Menu, New Deformer and call it Hill. In the scene tab parented to the plane there's a deformer field, a deformer base and a deformer. This red sphere outline is the deformer field. Points within this field will be moved when the deformer is moved. Select the deformer field and the field's points are lit up. The red points are most strongly influenced and will move the most and the yellow points will move the least. I can move the sphere around and you can see different points will be influenced depending on where I move this field. Where the points aren't lit up they won't be moved at all. Select the deformer and move it. Notice that the red points in the field move the most and the yellow points move the least. Select the deformer field and move it and the deformed points move with the field. I can scale down the deformer field. I'll change this to 50,000. The points stay moved the same but the field is smaller. Now I'll select the deformer and move the actual points. If I scale the deformed points, the red ones in the field move closer together. And that's basically what deformers are. It'll take you about half an hour of scaling and rotating and translating both the field and the deformer itself to get a feel of how you move the mesh with the deformer and move the field of influence with the deformer field. I'll reset all these points to zero and I'll put the scale of the field to about 100,000. I'm only guessing here. I want to create the first hill on the left hand corner so I'll move the field over there and select the deformer and move it up to create the hill. Now I'll convert this deformer into a morph. Select the plane in the scene tab and bring up the deform tab which is on view menu tabs deform. Tick create root control parameter, delete applied deformers and apply spawned morph and then click spawn morph and I'll call it hill 1. And now the deformer has been deleted but over on my plane I have a morph. Now I'll select the plane and create a new deformer for a second hill and scale it down a bit. Go and pick my deformer and move the mesh up. I actually want to move that back a bit so I'll move the field backwards. That looks good and maybe move the deformer up a little bit. Now I'll select the plane again and create another deformer on it and scale that down and grab the deformer and make another bump. 
Notice how I'm alternating moving the field and the deformer. The field moves the influence of the points and the deformer moves the actual points. You probably won't understand this until you actually do it yourself. In the front here I'm going to put Toadstool Cottage. Now this plane has two deformers. When I spawn the morph it's going to take both these deformers and put them into one morph. So I'll make sure I've got the plane selected, go to the deform tab, I've got root control parameter ticked, delete the applied deformers and apply spawn morph and I'll call that hill 2. So now I have a hill 1 and a hill 2 on my plane and no deformers showing. I'll put it back to texture shaded now and load up Toadstool Cottage which is available from DAS 3D. And I'll scale the plane up to fit the background. This is the top view of Toadstool Cottage and you can see the ground plane comes with it so I can take the texture from the ground plane and apply it to my hills. View menu, tabs and surfaces will show me the surfaces tab where I can change all the surfaces. Choose the surface selection tool on the tools menu and click on the surface to select it. Take note of the name of the texture file on the ground plane because I'm going to use this same texture on the hills. Now click on the hills to select the surface of the plane and in the diffuse channel select the name of the texture that was used on the ground and the same texture is applied to the hills behind the house. You could also go on the internet to cgtextures.com and find a suitable texture there. This is a render of Toadstool Cottage and this is the render with the hills and light dome sky behind it. Of course these same deformer techniques can be used on a head for sculpting. You'll have noticed that I've talked about the field and I've talked about the deformer but I haven't talked about the base. I'll show you what the base looks like. The circle's the base and the arrow is the deformer. The base is most useful when you're rotating as it gives you the center of rotation. For example I'll give Victoria 4 a hooked nose. First of all I move and scale the field to highlight the points on her nose. Then move the base to the center of the nose. I haven't moved any points with the deformer yet. When I rotate the deformer it rotates from the center of the base. You can also hide the deformers in the scene tab if they get in the way. This is an example of a head where I've put a number of deformers on. The sum for the cheeks, the corner of the mouth, the nose, the chin. I've also got one to narrow the head. I always find it easier to put the texture on before I start modeling so I can try to shape the face to suit the texture. I'm sure you've all had moments like this where you're using an odd body morph and the clothes just won't fit. This example is speeded up to show you how easy it is to fit. For the second deformer I just copy the settings from the first deformer and change the signs on the x-axis so negative goes to positive, positive goes to negative on the x-axis. As a final example, this is the prince on his horse and his jacket doesn't fit, it goes straight through his thigh. So I just added a deformer to the bottom of his jacket and rotated it so that it fitted properly. You can get really creative using deformers. Thanks for watching, I'd love to see what you come up with.